Number two of our second Western best of three of the day coming up on the halfway point for our broadcast day team empire taking on Virtus pro polar and polar leads the series one to nothing on the back of some very strong play in game. Number one empire needs to get it together in a hurry. And uh, if not, they're going to be making their D2L debut at O and one, unfortunately for them. I'm your host, Aaron AC Chambers, joined by Trout for the broadcast Five as always. And remaining. really and truly, man, I mean, Mag is good. Everyone knows he is, but he really uh, reminded us all in very, Reserve very time. stark terms just how good he is and can be in game one. Absolutely. I, I mentioned that as well. And one thing I've noticed from FNG in particular, whether it was when he was on Navi or even in these games just that I've seen today, is that in the drafting stage, it seems like he really comes in with a plan. Like, he knows what he wants to do. And he seems very confident. Like, he's picking very quickly. If you look at reserve time, he's got basically none of it. And whether he comes in with a plan or he just knows exactly what he wants to, you know, respond to what Team Empire picks, he's confident. And I think that we've talked about this a lot, that confidence goes a long way. And uh, I think especially having a, you know, he's a new, he's quote-unquote a standard right now not, not for sure like going to be their full replacement but having a leader that's confident i think says a lot for the rest of your team too and just kind of trickles down and the rest of your players play confidently so i think there's something to be said about that oh yeah man winning's contagious and as is enthusiasm and whenever you can just get on a on a good roll whenever you can really start to feel like you're playing your game it's tough to to, to knock you back out of that but um i really love you know all of that aside Virtus Pro Polar and their their draft here in game two. Um, I just love how survivable it is. I love how much it all works together. Great roaming potential from Venge and Skywrath. It may be a little predictable lane wise, you would assume a mid brew with an off lane bat and then whatever carry that you want to farm. But even if they decide to go safe lane brew, send the bat out in the off lane, then pick another hero for mid here, I still would dig it. And it just, you know, it's it's a tough team to, to bring down, a tough team to get on top of because they can help each other so well. And Empire, while they do have a lot of silences and a couple of very effective ways to deal with the Brewmaster in the Doom and, of course, the Waning Rift, I feel like the follow-up damage is severely lacking for them right now. They have a, a, a Dream Coil, they have a, a really effective but somewhat unreliable stun in the cask, and they have Fire Blast for the Ogre Magi. But again, where's their damage going to come from? If they, unless they just burst someone down and, and Witch Doctor hits a fantastic ulti, I don't know how they can stand and fight if Brewmaster does manage to get a split off, which is going to happen Team at least a few times. I do think Puck is a fantastic here in this meta. I think it's, I don't know, the win rates or stats can be misleading. So even if it is a relatively low win rate, usually you think a hero has like a really high win rate, but it's simply because it gets picked up so often, you think it will win a lot more, but it has, remaining. you know, a lot of losses too. But I think Puck is fantastic against Brew. Five it's good against the Batrider. Like, Batrider's going to have to get a very early BKB, but you don't Radiant really want to or can really 
necessarily afford it in games when, that are even. I was totally, I swear to God, I was going to say Naga, man. I swear to God. I was like, you know, we've seen this trend of having your brewmaster or your mid heroes that are initiators in the safe lane. And then just, well, I guess they can go Naga in the safe lane as well. But either way, I thought Naga would have been a fantastic addition to their lineup. Definitely think it's a solid pickup. And just as importantly, it guarantees if you catch two or three with a song, just think of everything that you can line up off of it. You can guarantee a Bruce split before the fight even Ten breaks out. Remain. You can guarantee Bad Riders right next to his target for Lasso. You can guarantee Skywrath Mage is just remain. hovering over whatever target he wants to silence, and then he can follow it up with an immediate um, uh, Mystic Flare, and that's, of course, off of Ensnare as well. And, yeah, I, I think this is just a masterful draft out of Virtus Pro, and Empire, I mean, when you look at what they're going to want to do, we can. I mean, it's so hard to tell. I mean, is it going to be a mid doom? Is it going to be a one position doom? Are they going to jungle it? They're going to go troll warlord. That's an odd one to me. Yeah, um, I don't know. I, I think I think you know my opinions on troll. <laughs> and my <laughs> the only that? the only thing about troll is like, you know, I. I Personally, I feel like he's only good when you have things to synergize with the ultimate. And I see right. nothing here. I actually see nothing. I see a puck auto attack. I just, I don't see the damage, man. Like, they're going to be able to roll up, throw out a cask, throw out a fire blast. Troll maybe Prepare gets on top of someone, battle. uses whirling axes or what have you. And even if Solo on the Doom happens to have a crit creep, um, the Alpha Wolf uh, uh, aura going, there's just nothing to compare to what can actually come out of Polar in response. I mean, when you look at just their initiation, their ability to wipe heroes off of the map, and they are going to be running Illidan in mid yet yeah. again. So um, on this Naga Siren, if he gets off to a good start and gets a very early Radiance, like, I just don't have a clue what Empire can do. Their thinking is, we'll put Doom safe and Aggo try because they think it's going to be a Naga bottom. But even if it was a Naga bottom, I don't even think that lane's that bad because I think that VS is a good support. Skywrath is one of the best in lane. This could I do be not like this cosmetic set at all. On who? <laughs> on the binge. Oh, I, the so hair looks like really, really no, weird. It's like, like the back, like when she's running around, it looks like her booty's just huge, like monstrous big. Like that booty. Mother of, like mother of five who works in a cookie factory big. Hmm. But anyway, I guess I'm one to talk about big booties, huh? <laughs> Empire moving three down. Into the uh, moving two right now. They do have the one flank. across the river. Yeah, this could work out well for them. We're going to have Silent engaging onto FMG. FMG isolated out. Phobos is there. Takes a clap. Head gets two. And now Silent trying to clean up FNG without losing himself. That will be our first blood, but always want to fly. Should be a return kill. Let's see if Lil can make it out. Phobos is going to have another clap in one second. Decided not to use it. I actually think they could have killed him if he had clapped again. Um, they would have clapped and probably gotten at least one, if not two, Arcane Bolts from Lil. But instead, not going to be the case. One to one, but the base advantage goes to Empire from the first blood. It could have been a little bit cleaner and quicker from VP Polar. They did. They couldn't decide exactly who they wanted to focus. And uh, at the very least, they still got the... Uh, who was it that fell there? It was the uh, the Witch Doctor. I was. It was yep. even close there. I actually thought he, there was a chance for him to get away, but they did have some good damage with auto attacks and... Uh, no one for one exchange, but Silent gets the first blood, and that's boots for him, so not too bad. Counter wards and sentries and wards a galore. This yes, bottom lane is just a mess. Yeah. Sunny left behind, and they're going to follow it up with a magic missile. There's an arcane bolt, and that's going to be a kill for... No! The cast got the bounce they needed, and they're not going to be able to track him down. And again, as unreliable as it can be when it's on and whenever it hits where you want it to hit, it is awesome. And that time they get their ogre away because of it. Yep, he couldn't um, couldn't find the last auto attack there for the uh, Skywrath. He was trying and trying, but he was just kind of like around the trees and it couldn't connect with it. A double proc there with the um, the whirling axes, which is actually a pretty damn good spell early on. Nice slow, I think it's a static slow. Yeah, thirty percent at all levels. One point wonder most of the time. And we'll see if Polar wants to try to punch back. I mean, they've got plenty of punching power, especially with the Ogre gone. But uh, it looks like they're still playing a little bit scared. I feel like they're letting Silent and, and Always Want to Fly boss them around a bit too much here. And now that the Ogre's back, uh, Ogre is just level one, so he only has Ignite. When he gets Fire Blast up, it's going to be a different story. But for now, 
I, I don't know. I guess they're just so tanky. And once he, once the ogre gets level two with fire blast and the witch doctor hits level two with his heal, it's going to be pretty tough to bring them down. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they definitely have the better lane. Like, th there's a reason why they went aggro Charlie is because they felt confident with the troll. But the question is, are they going to get enough in the mid game? And are they going to be able to really snowball to where Naga just gets so shut down early on that she can't come back in time, like we saw with IG last night? And I'm not 100% I'm not sure about that. Like, Bat up in this top lane, Mag. I'm sure he'll be fine in this lane. Oh, I missed the kill. Sorry. Nah, he was just out of position and got chased around and killed easily. Like, there wasn't a whole lot of action involved. He literally just got caught out of position and ended up dying under his own tower. Uh, or very near under his own tower. And Empire is bossing them around very effectively here. This is what I was talking about. Like, I didn't feel like it was going to be that strong, but now they have level two on all of their heroes, almost all of their heroes. Sunny did find an invis, but didn't find occasion to put it to use. But here in just a creep or two, he's going to have Fire Blast. And up at top, we can actually see Solo has run the Bat Rider all the way back to base. So Empire is doing well in pretty much every lane. The Puck is also on top of the board in terms of CS in mid. Don't mind me. Yeah, I, I expected that. Um... Puck is one of the better laners in the game. And it is against the melee hero, but um, yeah, really bossing him around. So Illidan's going to have to bottle crow right now. It's coming at the, at the moment. He will have Bassy Ring as well, but 14 CS to 21. It's not terrible, but I imagine this could actually get much worse, much worse for the Naga. And Batrider putting some pressure onto Solo. Three stacks of sticky napalm. Four stacks now. There is a seven stick charge, though. He's this dead. is going to be close. I think he's dead. I think they're going to trade, though. Yep. Trading. Oh! No, no he doesn't! He and lives! Ma <laughs> and Mag's also going to be able to clean up a few more CS before he heads out. Mag cutting it close, without a doubt, the MVP of this series. Oh, hang on! Illidan is right on Yoki, or right on Resolution. Is he going to get him? No way! Anaga chasing back a puck, bottling up, and he does get him! Got him with a Riptide and auto attack! You cannot allow that to happen. You cannot die as a puck to a mid Naga Siren. Now there's going to be an engagement at bottom. Looks like Empire wants payback and they're going to seek it on FNG. Stun on the silent FNG will end up dead. Polar has DK Phobos right up front. In the meantime, Lo kind of got caught up in the trees. He's way too far forward. So it's going to be a one for nil trade in bottom, favoring them entirely. But all things told, what they lost in the other lanes not, is quite a bit to make up for. And every time I look at Mag, he's run out of lane. This Doom is just kicking his butt in top lane. More action bottom. bottom. Always oh, want to fly. Oh, can they bring him down? That heal is so strong at this level. They do manage to bring one for one. Now Mag's going to show up. Now Silent. Lassoed on back. They get the Ogre. They're going to get Silent for sure. And just like game one, what seemed to be a nice little start for Empire evaporates in front of our eyes. They do end up losing the tier one bottom, so it's not without complete consequence. But we can see that Empire had built themselves up to about a thousand gold lead in pure efficiency as well as kills in the first five minutes or so. Hell, the first four minutes. And now, even after that, it is slowly heading back in their direction a little bit because of the tower. But that they saw that erase, and now the uh, the experience is also heavily in favor of Polar. Yep. Ring of Aquila here for Illidan. Yeah, that's that's kind of embarrassing, actually, dying as a buck Radiant's to a... To a... Uh, Nagus Hyper like that. Uh, he probably just took more damage than he thought he was going to and used an orb aggressively and then had to just try to run away. But there is a ogre who's level three sitting here around mid. Orb off the mark here from resolution as he's gonna try to go for the top rune. He's gonna get cornered in here though. He does have sleep if things get really hairy though. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna use it. No, he got silenced. And there it is. Bought just enough time. Are they gonna try to fight this? Yeah, they're thinking about it. This seems a little chancy. And yeah, there's going to be a fire blast on the Lil. Silent's going to be rotating over. Mag is still trying to chase down Resolution. That seemed weird. It seems like they should have just gotten the hell out of dodge. Resolution taking a lot of damage from the tower, by the way. Is going to be healed up a little bit by the Witch Doctor heal. And now behind that, Solo has come in. He has Doom and he will spend it. Uses it on the Venge. And she's dead. No doubt about it. Here comes Mag back into the fray. He can get the mana, he'll have a lasso, but he's nowhere near it. Had a bottle charge, but it was wiped off of him very quickly. Another TP, and that's going to be Illidan coming in this time. He's a fire blast as soon as he lands, and the follow-up. Stomp is also there from Solo. He may have just fed. Using the mirror image to try to get away, he has to run. Now he's bottling himself back up. An absolute cluster under this tier one. Illidan's there, though, and now that damage begin to pay off. We see one drops as Mag is just, he can't lasso, but he's burning them down. 
with fire from the air. Call this Vietnam. Just tearing the trees down in a complete cluster and making it rain pain from the skies. Eight to six. Polar once again snatches back the momentum of the game despite Empire looking good for a moment. Illidan, though, will be hit with the coil. They're going to try to jaunt on top. Here comes the split, most certainly from Phobos. He's thinking about it. Illidan uh, actually does manage, does die, but they're going to end up getting at least two out of it, perhaps three, off of the Panda split. Now Solo's going to come in. They're going to get always want to fly, almost certainly. Panda aspects could be microed a little bit better. Are they going to get him? Like, this is taking a long time for him to clean up. He doesn't have enough mana for a clap, so no. And now FNG may be in trouble. He has to try to make it back down to the river. Solo's right there. Chasing him with the phase boots. He's going to throw the magic missile just as he crests the high ground. Trying to fog him. Not going to be able to do so. Really sloppy. Oh, fight. Yeah. Like, the, the brew didn't seem like he did much of anything. He uh, he actually just let him down from the um, the storm spirit uh, aspect too, too soon. Because yeah. the stun wasn't ready for him. He needed to have him just stay up there just a little bit longer. So kind of unfortunate from DK Phobos. He's about 800 gold away from his blink. Not the best, but when the tower got pushed to like four minutes, I think it's not too bad. But yeah, could use a little bit better micro. And uh, Empire keeping up the constant pressure, this time in the mid lane. And they have the right idea. Like, you need to keep pressure up no matter what, especially on the towers against the Naga, just to stop her farm. And despite her getting that solo kill and kind of, you know, creating some nice space there in mid, is not very far from where she wants to be. Like, 400 gold at nine minutes, like, not even close to her relic. No. So. Not too good for her, to, to be quite honest. That's surprising, especially given the fact that she did get the solo kill on the Puck. She's died once, and Puck has died twice, but she still is trailing. Oh, no, actually, she's slightly ahead of the Puck, so it's not just her. It's uh, Resolution as well, just struggling in this mid position. The Troll is well farmed, but so is the Bat. Doom is well farmed, but so is the Brew. So in terms of mobility initiators, pretty, pretty close. Yep, Urn picked up here by the Ogre. Still pressuring top is silent. I'm curious to see what kind of build he goes for. I've seen so many different things. Like, I know Fear was really liking Troll for a while, and he'd go like Treads Mech. Um, kind of more utility. Ulti coming out from him to put some more pressure, but he's quickly stifled by the uh, presence of Lil. But yeah, I'm curious to see what he goes for. Here comes some aggression with the smoke from the from behind with uh, with the Witch Doctor and the Ogre. And FNG going to run right into it. Super dead. Even use the ulti. Seems like a bit of overkill, but just wanting to make sure the kill did take place, and they're going to push the tier one off of that. Down at bottom in the meantime, Mag may hook up with the Naga and try to push mid. They're going to take this tier one very Radiance easily. They already expended up there. They just expended the glyph. And Lowe's going to be careful. He's going to be caught with a coil from behind. He was hanging in no man's land. In between towers with no team to help him. Phobos is trying to push bottom, and in mid, Mag is finally making his way over. This is just going to be a free tier one, and they might even decide to push it towards tier two. Nope, looks like they want to back. Yeah, they're going to back up. They're keeping nice pressure, and as long as Naga's not getting good farm, I think they're okay. She, she did get some surge. Maybe she took some stacks or something, because she just got a thousand gold in like a minute. So, not too bad for Illidan. Bouncing back a little bit better. Here comes Mag, trying to look for something that's, that's pinged out immediately. They know it's happening. And with a Blink Dagger fresh up on DK Phobos, they need to be a little bit careful. This tower is completely healthy, though, so I don't think they need to posture themselves in a defensive or in an aggressive spot around this tower. Both teams kind of settling down, at least for the moment. And of course, with the Naga Siren pick, Polar will be quite happy to take any free time they can find on the map, no matter what. Another smoke from Mag and Phobos in the meantime, though. Nobody's going to be home. At most, they may get an ogre who's hanging out mid. Everyone else from Empire is elsewhere, at least for the moment. And they're going to go ahead and cross over the river and maybe make their way into the jungle. A couple of targets there. Resolution and Solo. Solo would be a good one to bring down right about now. He's working on drums. And here we go. Mag, yep. Got eyes on him. There's going to be the Doom, though. A little bit too quick. Coil spin, and we're going to see a split from Phobos. Mag just trying to buy time. I think he's dead to the Doom damage regardless. Silence is going to silent. It will come back in on his own. And the rest of them for Polar looking to perhaps follow up. Lil made his way over. 
But that's just a reaction time thing. They had the same amount of time to look at each other and think about it, but it was the Doom that got his ulti off first. Yeah, it was actually kind of awkward because the skeletons were right there, just sitting on him, and if he just quickly just tried to click what, as fast as he could, there's a chance he actually misclicks and hits the skeletons with the lasso, so that's why I think he was reserving himself just a little bit right there, but it ends up being a one-for-one one as far as ultimates go. Panda split for the for the Doom. The Troll also ultied right there, which is a low cooldown, but it also made it so he had no more mana for like the Whirling Axes, which is kind of annoying, but... They also got a tower out of it, so not too bad of a trade. More space for the Naga, who's up to 2600, so not too, doing too bad. It was looking kind of grim there, actually, like a couple minutes ago where she had nothing, but it's really bounced back and farm. Roshan now the target for Empire, though. When they get something working, they're going to be able to take it very quickly with the help of the Witch Doctor heal and, of course, the ulti from the troll. They're going to smoke in that direction. And if I'm not mistaken, isn't Trolls growl global, so they should have heard it? Yes, you can hear it. Yeah, so I'm sure with no one on the map, they hear the growl. And they have to know this is happening. Are they just scared of it? Um, well, they don't have vision. They're smoked up. They don't have panda split. They're probably just scared and don't want to fight into that. Taking a long time. And this troll's ult was actually used twice, and they will give the Aegis to the troll. That was an odd sequence. They moved towards mid, but then they just stopped. They didn't push mid. They didn't push top tier two. They didn't accomplish anything. They still smoked through and just stopped. Yeah, you, you need to be a bit, like, more decisive about your Roshans. Like, are you going to defend it? If not, then completely just disband, spread out, farm. But yeah, that was kind of awkward. They're all kind of sitting in mid. The fact that they smoked kind of told us that they wanted to do something, but they didn't do anything. So. Right. Very aggressive warding out from Empire right now. As we can see, one of this one is about to drop, so that'll be going down now. But also one over top of Roshan. They've been doing a pretty good job of holding the Naga down for the most part, as we are at 14 minutes. But she is doing what a Naga Syra does, which is gradually grind her way back to where she wants to be. She's 600 gold away from the Relic. If they can kill her once or twice or try to force fights where she has to show up, I think they're going to be fine. But for right now, you're talking a team with a troll, which is really your late game option. I mean, you have some great abilities like Doom that never stop being good. And same with Puck. And Witch Doctor finds a free one on 2-1. Now there's going to be a toss into the air by the Storm Aspect of the Brew, who split in mid. Always want to fly. Cleaned up for free. Let's see if they want to try to pursue. No, just going to pull back and not go after Sunny. Mag was there and had Blink Lasso, but didn't want to expend it just for that kill. But yeah, I mean, now she's up to 3,400 gold, and with Troll as your best late game option, you really need to try to delay that Radiance as long as possible. Otherwise, as soon as it's done, you go on the clock. Mag goes in, gets the Lasso, grabs Sunny, dragging him back, gonna be... Two TPs in. That's going to be Solo. Solo comes in, gets the Doom off on Phobos, but Phobos had already used his ulti. So a bit of an odd choice in target there. As he's going to be able to run away and, sort of, and tanky as he is, he's not going to care to be Doom. Now there's going to be a coil used on Lil. Lil trying to use the trees. There's going to be a Song of the Siren. Mystic Flare about to come. Get ready for it. See how well they time it. And there it is. Hell, didn't even have to Mystic Flare. Just hung on to it. As they take two very easy kills after the leadoff Lasso from Ogre. And once again, Polar just seems to be operating at a much tighter, higher, coordinated level than Empire. And they take a win, and they're about to take a Tier 1. Is Trout muted? Oh, am I? Am I? <laughs> yes. I was saying Empire looked a little bit uh, scrappy and uh, kind of like your quintessential CIS team, just overextending a little bit. Um, yeah. They had no vision of the Naga right there, but they're they were chasing for way too long, and of course the, not the Song of Siren's coming out. Of course they're going to respond that way. So, there's the Relic, and then not a bad time, honestly. Like, I, it did look no. grim. At nine minutes, he had a Aquila bottle and 400 gold. That was it. So he's bounced back. Uh, not too bad, actually. This hero is kind of goofy. Goofy? Yeah. Cheap. Like, no, seriously. I just... I... It's like, what was the the joke like the first week of D2L play is Terrorblade is a balanced hero. Quotation, CTY. That's how I feel about anyone who plays Naga. Yeah, the hero's fine. Yeah, it's good. Don't worry about it. <laughs> well, he did get the solo kill on the puck. Yeah. So, hero or not, that was all out play, I think. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. No, I'm not trying. Like, I'm, I'm being facetious, 
obviously. Uh, Heroes is fine, but Jesus, how miserable it is to deal with. And thankfully, in the Milo level pubs, you don't see her pick that much yet. But at some point, my life is going to become hell. Anyway, four man smoke coming out from Empire. They have their doom at the ready. They have their death ward at the ready. And Phobos is going to be the target. He blinks very quickly, though, and the coils whiffed. Resolution whiffed on the coil, and Polar may just react off that group as four and go fight, knowing that having that one big ability down is going to make such a difference. And Solo opts to grab a Midas at 18 minutes in. I am not a fan. No, I, I'm not a fan at all either. Like, I don't think that they're going to take this late game against the Naga. Oh. I really don't. Even if you are doomed, you get a refresher. Just don't. You're going to get spread out too much. You're never going to find that proper target onto the Naga. She's just going to spread yeah. herself out across all three lanes. So yeah, I don't think this is a good decision. Maybe if you went for it right away, but and maybe if they have a different hero than Troll, but not with a Troll on your team. Like <laughs> that hero is not going to bring too much to the table late game. If anything, go Vlad's. For, for the cost of that, buy a Vlad's, man. I would have Vlad's pick up, sure. especially with beginning to lose a little momentum. You need to get. In the face of VP and fight a little bit more. You've got two melees that are your primary right clickers and the troll and the doom. Would love it. And there's the there's radiance. There's Naga's radiance. 18 and a half minutes after what seemed to be a very radiance troubleson lane phase. Did get the kill on the buck, as you mentioned, but um, she still didn't farm particularly well. And still has bounced back. It is now just about 100 gold, not even that, like 80 gold, behind the highest net worth hero on the board. And the death of this tower will put her over the top. Yeah, and I look at the Troll Warlord, and I'm thinking, like, looking at his items, Face Boots, Yasha, making a BKB right now. We'll have it relatively soon. This is, like, similar timing to... Oh, here we go! Big There's rotation. That song. Oh, this is going to be horrendous. And the split's already there. Mystic Flare, he held on to it. Actually, not well as engaged as I would have thought it would be. In the meantime, Mystic Flare has dropped over on the other side, but Resolution still has a chance to get away. Now they're going to engage behind it. The Troll does end up dead, and Sunny being pursued out as well. That's a short-range swap. Is that level one swap? Probably. Yeah, just level one swapped him, which basically means you do -si do him. I, I love level one swap. It just, it's a fun ability, but outside of like certain situations, it just feels so damn useless and funny to watch. But uh, nonetheless, another win for Polar. 16 to 11, Naga's Radiance and Naga's Farming. That's, that's how it feels like that panic was just, oh God, N -N 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 Naga's Farming. Like, that's how it feels as soon as the Radiance comes up. And that's what God. now, I'm sure, Empire is feeling in their gut. It's like when you're in a pub game, and the worst thing ever, and I can't stand it, is when your offlane hero says wants to announce to the team, just just to let everybody guys, just to let you guys all know, Anti-Mage is free farming. Okay, just just yep, so you yep. know. Oh, yep. shit. Oh, pet peeve. P-A-F-F. P-A-F-F. Exclamation point. Well, oh, okay. Thanks. <laughs> Appreciate it. Good, 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 good that you're up on that, man. Appreciate uh, uh, play by play. I, I, I love that we're both tired and we're both getting salty and voicing our grievances. I, I, I love it. <laughs> Professionalism yep. is a thing, and sometimes so is being sleepy. It's the Naga, man. It's the Naga effect that it has on casters and viewers. Yes. Illidan has 2K gold. Like you, dude, it's like you said. It was 18 and a half minutes. He finished the, the Radiance, and now he has bots immediately. Yeah, it, it's it, like li like two minutes. Yeah, if even that. Yeah, isn't that isn't that crazy? It's like every single time. It's just it's like the hero is made to be built this way with the boots yep. of travel. And again, I I don't know if it's just because of this hero, but I, I still I still am on the side. I know this isn't really a time to be talking about balance, but I still feel like boots of travel is really good for the cost right now. I really do. But Oh, no, I agree with you. And... I, I, it, I'm one of those players that when I, if I can just like, if I get ahead, I don't want to build a Midas. I want to build early pods because especially on like a three, four or five position, man, you, that pays for itself all through the game. Like that gold from the T save TPs piles up quick. Roche back up in two minutes and silent trying to farm as best he can. He's got a BKB waiting on him and he's got a Yasha. So. Don't know what he wants to pick up next. I wouldn't mind if he just finished a flat-out Manta style. Just to create a little bit more confusion in these fights. Problem is, the item progression on Empire is certainly quite nice as well. Still not a big fan of this Midas on Solo at all. Vladimir's offering would have been just so much better. Hell, even just saving it away for buyback, which I think he's going to need at some point real soon. I think he still has enough. 
Uh, just barely. If he dies, I don't think he will, though. But, yeah, on the whole side of Polar, Mag on his way to a BKB after Blink, or Staff, so he's in great shape. Naga, bots, and just like that, another 60 seconds, 1,500 additional gold. Yep. We'll have the Yasha soon. I mean, this is just the nature of the hero. And this is why it's so scary to play up, playing up against the Naga. You have to be ultra aggressive. And I think just you have to straight up gank the Naga in the lane. Because if she doesn't have the early good start, she does not farm fast. And, uh, like, the earlier you get, obviously, the earlier you get that Radiance, you, you farm exponentially faster. So setting her back even two or three minutes is actually a huge step in the right direction. And... <laughs> Looks like uh, it was actually FNG circled the whole map. Lasso on to solo. Mystic Flare helped out with a, a uh, uh, flame break. And Empire on the ropes for sure. The Naga being left totally to her own devices as four. They're just being terrors across the map. Overall, we can see the gold lead has actually not gone that far into Polar's favor. But it's not what the st it's not it's not the status of things now. It's what they're going to be in ten minutes that has me worried. Yeah, absolutely. And like, basically, to be even in this game, Empire has to be ahead by like three thousand right now to just yep. to be even. But yeah, so they're actually really far behind. And I mean, this this is also considering they have a troll as their one position. Like, I don't know what this hero does, man. That's a BKB. You can still go through it with the lasso. You can still go through it with the ensnare. We'll see. Wow, that's bold. One hero coil on the FNG. They're going to spend everything on him. And this is might signal a time for Polar to want to come fight again. I mean, they just spent, like, everything to bring him down, including the Death Ward, which the cooldown's not that long, but if they hook up and go in with a split, they should be able to take a fight. Hell, they're just going to get Sunny for free. Catching him down in the river. They use Mystic Flare just to secure the kill. And, yeah, Illidan is ready to rock is rolling up with the rest of his team. Mag has a haste rune, wants to find a target. And Solo, oh, he might get the courier. It's going to be so close. Nope, breaks off from it. And now doomed out. And he is going to be coming back to the ground in the middle of all oh, Solo. Waiting around and no, never mind. I thought Illidan was coming in with troops. Instead, Mag just by himself. Buying him some extra time there so that no one else could follow up. He was in a kind of precarious spot anyway, but... Yeah, Wasted Doom. Again, I just feel like these Dooms, both this game and the last, have been really ineffective. Uh, this is a fantastic hero, but has not had the greatest impact, to be honest. And Illidan is just going to have a field day now with the side of the map of Empire. Even managed to find himself an Illusion Rune, which is just not even so fair. So good. Not even fair. And uses it immediately. In mid, we've got Phobos and FNG. Hanging out. Silent's going to run right into the real Illidan, and he gets an immediate bash. He's doing good damage here. Illidan has to ensnare and now try to run. So Illidan is not without farm and not without the ability to do some damage. He, he even used his BKB now, and he's selling out a lot to try to get this kill. And Resolution trying to catch up, but he's not going to get it. He's just not going to get it. Now there's going to be perhaps a turnaround. As Lil gets eyes on the Silent. Silent, though, using his phase boots and moving so quickly with phase and Yasha. However, behind that, we have a Bruce split onto Solo. Solo used that Doom earlier, as we saw. Did not have it to come right there. And Mag has Lasso, has Blink. There we go. I was going to say. Could have four staff, but I guess he just wanted to make sure he had the four staff extra in case. And Solo actually had Doom there, but opting not to use it. So a couple of awkward engagements across the map. This is going to end, though, with Polar collapsing on the Tier 2 in mid. Illidan actually channeled his bots onto the Panda. It's something I still think is a huge oversight and balance. I still think it's so crazy that you can do that. But uh, he actually canceled it in the middle. He was very, very low. He was still low from that last engagement, but found a rune and was able to actually come up to the HP that he has right now. It's mid tower goes down, FNG gets credit for that. He's up to level 11, so that swap is going to be a little bit better. DD bot, yeah, there's just complete control in the game from BP Polar. And until they actually get some kind of organized fight from Empire where they, you know, clearly doom out a target that's going to be valuable, like the Naga Siren, like the Panda, I don't think they're going to actually win a fight. I don't think Buck yeah. is doing enough. He went for a Midas, by the way, too. That is... 
the, okay, I am. You know this for me. I am a big fan of Midas, but not this game, man. Not against the no. Naga. Not when you have a hard carry as a troll, man. This this hard carry of a troll just doesn't really bring that much to the table. I mean, we saw the damage output he does, the damage potential, I guess, that he does have against the Naga. The problem is their composition, unless they start playing much better, is just never going to have a chance to get on her. And they're trying to chase down FNG again. He's going to eat the cast. Death Ward's going to go off as well. And there's a song to try to re-engage. Lil is going to be there. And let's see how they want to, they need to make up their mind. They want to back off last minute. This could go very poorly. And we actually see a nice force staff to get the Skywrath up top. He does get caught with a coil behind that. A little bit of target confusion as Silent went after an illusion and ends up dead because of it. Mag showing off his brand new BKB. In the meantime, there's this Brewmaster split. They get one, make it two of the supports as they drop the Witch Doctor and the Ogre, as well as the Doom. And once again, Empire just blowing their abilities, just putting everything on cooldown to kill a, a vengeful spirit that has what? Uh, she'll respawn soon. Can't be more than what? A, a thousand, maybe 1100 HP at most? 12, actually 1300, not bad. Not bad, but that's not who you want to prioritize. And again, <laughs> it's, again, it's a fight where Doom doesn't get activated or used. So it's just like this hero is so important in their lineups because he's got a lot of pressure on him at the same time though, not, not to... Not to, you know, bust his chops, but there's not much more his team can bring to the table. Witch Doctor doesn't seem too effective. There's illusions to deal with the casks. Ogre has not had the impact that he wants. Buck has just had a terrible game since the beginning. Troll is, well, Troll. It's the hero. So you really have to heavily rely on the Doom, and when he doesn't get it off, it's just game over. And now with this Aegis, they may just take a run at Tier 3. Illidan. With that Aegis, Amanta, yeah, he's going to get in and stare in the silent. There's a follow-up. He has to BKB out of this. That's going to be what? Yeah, he's down to eight seconds now. Song is going to catch Sunny. Naga being level 17 means she doesn't mind to spend that song very often. And Magic Missile to follow it up. They're being very cautious in how they pursue this out. That was weird. Um, <laughs> actually, Phobos just clapped nothing. Yeah, I saw that. But now... Bringing one down, I don't think you're going to grab Resolution. Mag does have his lasso at the ready, as well as the BKB. Solo is nowhere near the fight right now. He's back trying to finish up his Shivas, I suppose. And Shivas is a wonderful pickup against a Naga Siren, so I'm digging it. I just think the Midas really, <laughs> unless the game goes like another 40 minutes, and even then, like, like we've talked about, it's a carry troll. Yeah, I'm not a fan of this hero at all. Like, again, it's, it's okay with, like... A void or someone like that on the team, but they have nothing. Like it just doesn't synergize at all. Oh, I know silent, that. Oh, boy. Super dead. Just got blown to pieces. Got caught in mid. Didn't even have to spin the lasso. Then he got hit with a mystic flare, and never stood a chance. The rest of Empire has to TP out. Yep, Puck's running away. Has to TP now. He's delaying it for now. He's really just <laughs> creating some distance here for. Uh, Mag. Mag is in. No, he's not invis. He's actually smoked up, but won't find him. And yeah, there's. It's not. It's kind of hard to find things to say because it's just a, a typical Naga game. And it's it's a yep. typical Naga game where you're looking and you're seeing there's no way that Empire can win. It's like it's really, really hard. Yep. It feels so difficult. And you know, it's so pronounced at this level, too. Up, hang on. We're going to have always going to fly. Getting eyes on Illidan. Illidan is already feeling very tanky. Look at that. I mean, that's Death Ward. That wasn't, and that's a level two Death Ward at that. He just shook it off. Shook it off. It was almost like he just got hit with Ignite at like level three. Yeah, and that's without his heart too. He has enough for the yep. uh, Reaver, which he might pick up here. Still has the Aegis. I'm kind of curious why he picked up the Aegis anyway, but I guess it's okay. I think it would have been better on the Panda, but it's neither here nor there. Panda almost has his Assault Caress. So he's really farmed too. Assault Caress. Vlad's, Ags, fantastic farm for pretty much everybody except F and G. Mm -hmm. Empire trying to hold the line. 25 to 13. We're going to have Mag go in. Didn't catch a target, though. And he does have a BKB, but he got caught with everything. They're going to try to follow it up. He BKBs. He's going to end up dying. So big misstep there, and that's going to cost him. Let's see if they want to go back in. Beautiful clap. Got three and the split. And now Solo, with no target to Doom, is going to be caught with a Mystic Flare after being stunned by the rock. He's just going to scurry away. Silence in the same boat. We're going to have the Witch Doctor tossed up by the Storm Aspect. And comes back down to a hostile LZ. And big split and Riptide from the Naga. 
One big crit from Phobos Air. They did get the Doom away, and he does still have Doom. However, the, uh, they, you know, the Bad Rider, Mag, just that's his first major misstep of this series. Yeah. But it does hurt them. And now Solo's going to come back in. He dooms out Phobos. Illidan, though, happy to just go ahead and sing a song, sing a lullaby, and then TP out and get everyone else back to safety as well. Uh, FNG may be boned here. He's hiding in the trees. Oh, FNG doesn't have a TP. That's why. Yeah, he is probably dead. <laughs> Net, please. Okay, <laughs> maybe he had internet issues? I'm not sure. But, um, maybe he canceled his TP. I don't know. No, he didn't, because he just bought a new one and soft cooldown. But yep. I still think he dooms the Naga there. Like, I know Naga had Aegis, but, like, obviously, what's going to happen if you don't silence her or take care of her? She's just going to sleep. So, another wasted doom. Like, it's, again, it's hard. There is a lot of pressure, but. Oh, they just need to be better. Same thing with last game. Like there was no exception to dooming anyone other than the Abaddon. It just that's just the way it had to be. But um, yeah, similar problems this game. Troll still getting decent farm. You see the damage output. I do agree with you. The damage output is there with Crux from the Maelstrom. But that was definitely a big misstep from Mag. And had he not done that, I think that was been would have been Rex. Oh yeah, if he gets any kind of a target whatsoever in that, like if he lassos the Doom and they blow him up, speaking of lasso, how about a free one on resolution? Super dead, just burned to death in a hail of the Firefly Trail, along with the Radiance Burn from Naga Illusions, and he's going to go ahead and push this lane in. And they'll probably wait for that to come off cooldown, shove out top, and then be ready to go again. Manta style will be done on Troll though. I mean, and you know, again, Troll is not a bad hero. It's just the way he's going to work against the Naga and against everything that's on the side of Polar is going to be very complicated, especially going he's gone virtual glass cannon. I mean, he did pick up a BKB, and that helps some. But with him not going anything like a butterfly for evasion or not going um, anything like a heart or just any kind of a survivability item, he's still going to be very susceptible to getting blown up, especially if he gets lassoed and doesn't have time to BKB. Yeah, I do. I want to clarify here, though. I'm not I haven't confirmed this, but uh, someone tweeted at me and said that Yoki is not resolution. So I, oh. I don't know. I haven't confirmed it. But if it's not, I greatly apologize. Yeah, for real. Uh, but I, I will. I will try to find that out here. Sounds good to me. Mag. Oh, got silent. Got him at max range. And this is exactly what we're talking about. He had a BKB, but it doesn't matter. If he doesn't get it off, oh, look at this song, too. Illidan in mid. Could be singing a funeral dirge. They're going to catch. Always want to fly down the low ground. He's going to be cleaned up with no problem. Now Mag leading the way. Solo's there as well. Good swap. FNG swap solo. And swap, funny as it is at level one, is kind of legit at level two. And that may have just brought this game to its conclusion. Sunny down again. And Puck buys back, but I don't know what he can do by himself. We're going to see he trying to skirt around the outside. Buybacks a plenty spent that time around. And Sonny's doing what he can. He's trying to beat that bat to death. Not going to happen. As Virtus Pro rolling them over with an ultra kill from Phobos. That assault cure ass doing the job. And there you go. GG. Well played. Nice. Follow up from Polar and Empire makes their D2L Western schedule debut. A less than memorable one, dropping their first series 0 2. Yep, well played by Virtus Polar. Virtus Pro Polar. And nice <laughs> draft from FFG again. It still seems like he's so confident in what he wants to do. Fed quite a few this game at 2 and 10, but uh, got the job done. Got swaps when he needed him was ganking and pressuring all lanes when he needed to. Mag, fantastic uh, play from him again. One minor misstep, but they were already so far ahead, it didn't really matter. DK Phobos with 1-1-1-1-1 one, 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 one for his uh, score there. <laughs> and then the Naga Siren, well played by Illidan with that first blood. I don't think it would have mattered either way, even if like he still got dominated in mid. I just think the draft was better. I don't think yeah. that Empire had a way to deal with the Naga Siren at any phase of the game after he gets Radiance. I really didn't. Even if they were in a fantastic spot up, you know, 15k even. I think high ground defense with the Naga Radiance and the Batrider Lasso is just way too strong. Yeah. Um, so it's just well played and I think it's just a phenomenal draft. And not a big fan of the troll pick, to be honest. Well, something we didn't even really talk about 
is the value of Brewmaster with Drunken Haze against a hero like Troll. Whenever Troll is your number one answer to a hero like Naga Siren, then you're just like, LOL, Drunken Haze, good luck hitting her. Like, what do you what do? you do? Yeah. And I feel like that was a big part of the problem. And that was a, a factor throughout most stages of the game. The Bad Rider, excellent initiation. There were just too many ways for Polar to get in and take fights. Um, just the blink from Brew and from Bat was just way too much. And then you factor in Song and then easily overlapping with spells. Even the swap, once it hit level two for Venge. It was like you said, it was just a great draft. And Empire didn't play awful. Um, they could have played better, for sure. But for the most part, I feel like this was more VP winning this game than it was Empire losing it. And because of that, Virtus Pro comes back to even. They're at 2-2 two and two now. And the overall D2L standings, Empire falls to 0-1. Oh All righty, guys, that's going to do for our Western matches here today. We've got two Eastern matches on the way soon, though. I want to say, yeah, it's about five minutes after 2 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. So three hours from now. We're going to be bringing you a couple of our Eastern matches as well. I I have to double check, and I know Hyper Glory Team is in both of them, if I'm not mistaken. So I uh, need to double check the schedule. I'm sure you can find it no matter where you happen to be watching right now. If it's uh, via Dota 2 Lounge, I'm sure you can find it right there. And of course, Liquid Dota, Join Dota, whatever. Thank you for being a part of the broadcast for myself and for Trout. And make sure that you're a part of the broadcast in the future as well. Not just tonight, but across all of the future. Please hit follow. You're on Twitch TV uh, slash D2L. Certainly want to have you back. D2L, something that's been going on since 2012. And we're not about to stop. So this season rolls on. But even after it concludes, you'll be much more looking ahead to 2015 as well. I'm AC, and that's Trout. You can find us both on Twitter. It's at AC at A-Y-E-S-E-E -E -E for myself. And Trout, he's uh, pretty good at Dota. Trust me, you want to watch him stream and you want to get inside his mind when you can. He's at Trout Dota on Twitter, T-R-A-L-F-D-O-T-A, -T at MOBA Trout on Facebook as well. And uh, what's your stream, Trout? What's the name of it? Uh, it's just Slash Trout on Twitch. Slash Trout. Easy peasy. Alrighty, guys. Again, we're back in three hours as the D2L continues to roll on. Not going to have time for a... Uh